This video is brought to you by Sayerite. Visit Sayerite.com for all your project supplies, tools, and instructions. After trying out this Genoa for the Islander 37 sailboat, Jim, the founder of Sayerite and the new owner of the boat, found that the leech in the foot of this sail fluttered terribly. They need to be recut with more hollow and maybe a few seams tightened up to help support the edges. In this video, Jeff Frank, Sayerite sail designer with over 24 years experience, will explain how this is done. Here's Jeff. Hi, this is Jeff again. Um, we're working on a Rolling Genoa from the Islander 37. Jeff starts with a discussion of the leech in the foot. We're going to take off the sacrificial cuff cover because the owner's uh, Jim put a sleeve on his uh, head sail so he could uh, cover any furled sail that he used. So he's got a sleeve and we just need to take this off because the sail has a couple problems. One, the cover's on and the cover's on wrong. Um, and I can show you that. Just This is just a uh, this was done before Jim had the boat, but this is just a cut edge. No tape, no leech line, and of course that's causing some of the problems with the older sail is without any reinforcement and no leech line, there's no way to control the leech flutter and Jim, well, last time he was using it, so there's an excessive leech flutter on the sail. We heard from Jim, but we wanted to also see what's going on and the way to do that, and then the big sail, um, it takes some space, but the way to do that is to hold it up, pull it tight in three corners, and see what you see. I mean, it's not a perfect simulation to a boat, but it's close enough to give us the idea of where the leech is worse uh, as far as the, where we want to focus our, our uh, darting of the leech to tighten it up. If you see, the leech does not have any hollow, so when they cut the... the uh, sacrificial cover down and cut the leech down and cut that all off they basically did not put a hollow in the sail which of course means the leech is going to fall off and the foot's a disaster <laughs> for a furling sail because you can't see it here because it pulls straight but you see all that excess materials because we're pulling the foot straight and the foot round is way too much for a furling sail so we'll take that off we're basically going to clean the leech edge, clean the foot edge up, and we'll redo the clue ring and refinish the edges of the sail, and it will be all set to go for next spring. You've seen this in other videos that we've done, especially converting a sail to, to uh, a left tape conversion um, to check out the, the uh, round or hollow that it may have on the edge. We're doing that for the foot just to see how much foot round we really have in this sail. And go ahead and pull tight here, Cindy. And what the fold does is take off the shape. And sighting down this, we probably have close to 10 inches of foot round, which is pretty excessive for most furling sails, especially a furling Genoa. You could probably get away with that with a high clued sail, but generally speaking, um, with furling sails, I would, if I'm modifying a sail like this, an older sail, I'm looking at more like maximum about three inches, just to give it a little bit of a curve so it looks nice, but solve any issues we have with possibly rubbing the rubbing on the or wrapping around the drum when we furl the sail. See, yeah, it is basically pretty straight. For a sail this size, you should have, that's only got maybe, maybe three to four inches up top, maybe three inches max down low, so it just doesn't have much. Since Jim Grant now has a sacrificial sleeve, we will remove the sacrificial cover that's been sewn onto the leech in the foot. That's simply done with a seam ripper by ripping up the stitches and pulling up the Sombrella marine grade fabric. After removing the sacrificial cover, we found a lot of the double-sided tape that has been bonded and adhered to the Dacron sailcloth. We'll use a 3M adhesive remover and let it sit on the double-sided tape for a few minutes before using a putty knife to remove it. A plastic putty knife works well or this metal putty knife. Be careful to not damage the sailcloth. Old glue residue from the seam stick can be stubborn to remove. 
Letting the 3M adhesive cleaner sit for a few minutes can make the removal much easier. Since we are going to recut the leech and foot edges and then apply new edge tapes, we will save the remainder of the removal of the glue residue until the modifications are complete. This may save you time and work in the end, as some sections of fabric with glue residue may be cut off or covered with tapes. Now that the sacrificial cover has been removed on both the leech and the foot, we'll first concentrate on recutting the leech. Yeah, I'm just taping another round batten. We got several of these round battens that we inherited, I don't know, 20 years ago or more. Um, you can use uh, PVC tubing and get like a, a plumbing store and just get some PVC tubing and whatever length segments, relatively small three-quarter inch tubing, something reasonably flexible and just have a joint piece so you can just stick them together. What we're doing now is we're flaking the sail which will take, oh, if I can do it, there we go. It takes the fullness of the sail which tends to get pushed out to the edges and it makes the sail look like a lot of times you have straight leech or even a rounded leech which isn't the case. As you can see when we flake it the sail pulls the excess fabric, which has been pushed out to the side, pulls it back into the sails, and now we get a more realistic uh, leech edge, so you can see the howl that's in there. And now we're going to go ahead and take a look at where we stand. Okay, I'll grab that. Just hold it right to the edge, to the aft point of that ring. We want to go to the edge of the fabric. The reason I'm going a little bit different down here is because we're going to cut that off anyway. There's quite a bit of hollow in it. Doesn't look like that, does it? This isn't super critical. We just want to get within a few inches. All right. Um, we're measuring the leech just to see how much hollow we want to go to. Um, Right now, it doesn't have to be perfect here. You just want to get approximate. We got basically 41.6. All right, 41.6, and um, we're going to take 1.95% uh, of that, so 0 0.0195 gives me 0.8 feet, so almost 10 inches. So that's, you, you really want to multiply, I mean, at a minimum would be, 1.5 percent. Um, much better for an older sail to go closer to 2 percent, which is a little bit more hollow. Uh, if you're building a brand new sail, though, you could go like 1.5 percent and be okay. But uh, if you're a little bit more, it's just going to make the leech last a little bit longer. Okay, we're going about mid leech. It was 41 and a half, so that's uh, about 20 feet 9 inches. And like I said, this sail has uh, approximately seven inches, um, and we would like that to be closer to 10. We're going to come in here, so we're at least 10 inches. Make sure that's in the right spot. Yeah. And we're going to mark that. Now, if you want to go a little bit more, you're not really hurting anything. You're losing a little bit of area. But again, if it's an older sail, and the leech is bad. If you go in a little bit further, it's not going to hurt a thing. This is part of the, a little bit of the artsy thing of sail making. There's no right or wrong here. The, the right thing is you want to be close to that. You know, I would go 1.75 to 2 percent of the leech edge for a hollow. And now that we've got that marked, we're going to lay our batten out here and mark the sail. We're going to do this, then we're going to eyeball the curve just to check it and then we'll draw our line and cut. I'm going to pick the top and basically we want to pick through the sail and we want to come up here we don't want to cut into any of this so we want to make sure we're we're kind of off because this is going to be our marked edge so I'm going to come in here and just pick this get a spot and go through the sail I 
get this a little tighter. And if you're off a little bit, you can always adjust it. I want it going through the sail, but I don't want to be interfered with by the extra fabric here. Now Jeff moves to the clue. Okay. Again, we're going to come in here. This doesn't really matter. Um, if you weren't going to replace this ring, though, you would come up something more of this. So you're, you're actually coming into the patch, and you can stop here. Otherwise, if you come down like we're going to, because we're going to re replace this with new webbing, etc. Um, if you didn't do this, you would end up screwing up your ring or having a big open section here, and you can't have that. So we're going to just go ahead and pick this. If you're working on a floor where awls cannot be hammered through and put holes in the floor, you could use a sheet of plywood underneath the sail at those locations. Now we'll go halfway up the leech to the mark. Mark. And we're going to put this a little bit behind it because really what we're going for is this line here. On this side and on that side, it will be right in the middle. I'm going to want this to be a little bit shy of that so we can mark that. Jeff will now take a look and see what the curve looks like. It should be a nice smooth curve all the way down from head to clue. And you should always be eyeballing this. This should essentially look like a smooth curve. So that's what you want. And here he is at the head, sighting down. Yeah, looks good. You could pick this whole thing if you wanted to. Um, I'm not going to. I'm just going to draw my line. Just got to be careful not to put too much force and change the curve. And this could be done with anything. I'm using pencil. You could use a marker, Sharpie marker. Every time I sharpie, say Sharpie, they, they give me some money, so. The glue residue you see from removing the sacrificial cover will be removed using 3M adhesive cleaner later on, as discussed earlier. It is worth noting to be very careful that you're not pushing, pulling anything when you do this. To try and hold it. That is not my mark. It's over there. Looks like it. Now this part gets interesting. So basically we're going to be, um, actually the way I'm going to do it is I will mark this. But I'm going to mark this little cutout. And when I cut it, I'll just cut in another quarter inch. And if you use PVC pipes joined together, um, you're not going to have this issue. We just have pieces upon pieces taped together. If you have a joint like that, um, an end to end joint, you won't have that same issue. So we're going to start to cut now. I can get this going. Sometimes if it's difficult here to get started in this heavy stuff, which you'll see sometimes, even with these big pair of scissors. There we go. If it came from the other side, it'd be a little bit easier. Now you don't have to have scissors this size to cut this, so. I just wasn't going to go to my desk to get mine, which was a smaller Ginger scissors. Since the previous owner already tried to fix the leech by cutting it off rather crudely, 
we have to cut off this corner ring, uh, as Jeff discussed earlier. In a separate video, we will show how to reinstall the corner ring using webbing. The link to that video is here. Jeff will cut the stainless steel ring out and will reuse it when we reinstall it to the clue later on. Now that the leech has been recut, it's now time to recut the foot. In order to tell how much round is at the foot, the sail is flaked once, as discussed earlier when we did the leech. This one isn't as much. Okay, we're going to do the foot now that we have the leech done. Do that to annoy people. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're going to pick this out. Now here we don't really want much of a curve at all. So like I said, two to three inches. And we're going to come in uh, right near that. Be enough to finish it up is all we need. Again, you want to just avoid having to deal with the corner rings. So you prefer to make sure that whenever you pick something out, if you're going with a ring that you don't want to disturb because you don't want to replace it, then you kind of fair in the curve. And it may look a little bit different right at the edges. Um, but, uh, well, actually, you can see this one. This was already a furling general. If you can see this big, I mean, it's cut up here and cut way up at the clue. Um, normally your foot round would be more consistent throughout, but it isn't because it was probably a hanked on sale that they later modified to furling. I'm gonna, I'm gonna take a quick measurement of this just to get about in the center. Just near the edge is fine. Anyway, 23 nine, so what's that? Uh, nah, 11 nine, it's about right for the middle. And again, we don't want much. That's right at this seam, which I kind of expected, but in this case, I'm gonna just sight down it. This time, Jeff is not going to take measurements. Instead, he's gonna sight down the batten, trying to create approximately a three inch round on this sail. If you don't have battens like this, you could use PVC tubing, as discussed earlier when we did the leech. Here are some general calculations on how much round you should include on your Genoa. Generally, for cruising that excessive round, it's just a hassle. It's more to get caught on the lifelines, more to skirt the sail if you ever race, or your job was to run underneath everything after you tacked and flip the sail over the lifelines. This kind of simplifies things a little bit. Now that he's satisfied with the round here at the foot, he will mark it with a pencil, then we'll cut it off. If we were to take a measurement from the corners in a straight line we would find the batten would be laying about three inches at that center location. Here at the clue we've already cut off the corner ring when we reshaped the leech edge. We will re-sew a corner ring on here in a different video. Here's the link to that video if you'd like to see that. Going through webbing, that last part's kind of hard. The foot is now done. Let's go back to the leech. There was a lot of excessive flutter on the leech. We're going to tighten up a few seams. Here, Jeff will explain it. Okay, on this sail, um, we cut the leech down. That will help with any kind of flutter that was there. Um, but as the sail ages, the leech will stretch. Eventually, um, you're either going to be hooking the leech with the leech, with the leech line, because you'll need to put excessive leech line on to keep the flutter down, or you can tighten it up. And we're going to tighten this up. Um, Jim was saying it was fluttering about from the foot uh, 15 inches in, something like that. It was right in that area where it's fluttering. So we're going to take two seams out from the leech on the leech edge. I'm sorry. Uh, we're going to take two seams, not out, but we're going to trim them back. And we're going to do a dart of the seam, which will tighten up the leech edge. 
and won't provide, if you do a broad seam here, what you'll get is a big full spot right where you start the broad seam. And we don't want to do that. We just want to dart, a, just tighten it up a little bit. And it doesn't usually take much. Uh, a big sail like this, and because it wasn't too bad, we're going to uh, take about uh, approximately about a half an inch on two different seams. So we'll tighten up the leech overall, it'll be an inch. All right, we're gonna go in again. Um, basically, in the case of Jim, he said about a foot or so, we're gonna go a little bit beyond that. That's where he was seeing the flutter start and continue on the edge. If you notice your sail was doing that further in or less, you don't really need to go, if it was six inches in where you're seeing that kind of uh, really start to be a problem, then you're not gonna go two feet in with the seam and take that out. You're gonna go about twice uh, uh, the problem area in. So in our case, we're gonna go, oh, this is about a foot. We're gonna go yeah, about, yeah, we'll go about 22 inches approximately twice. Let me mark it, actually. Then you just rip the stitches out. Another thing, when you're doing all this little stuff with sails, you save your scrap pieces because they may come in handy for just little things. Um, like the scrap from the foot or the leech. If I did happen to accidentally slice a sail with my seam ripper, I could use the matching fabric that is already in the sail to function a, or create a small patch for it. Earlier on in this video, we were showing how to use 3M adhesive remover to remove the double-sided tape that was helping to hold the sacrificial in place when it was sewn on. Obviously, you can see here, we didn't remove it all. Not a big deal. So now basically, we got our, our seam tore back. Again, we're going to increase this by, so we're going to go a half inch above the old seam. Again, the seam, if you wanted to measure it, you could measure the seam. Usually they're typically about oh, a half, this one's a little over, oh, about not quite three quarters, about five eighths. So that one put it there, which we want just a half, which is where I'm at. So, and now once we get that, we want to go into our line and try not to get in the way of the camera here. We want to go back to the seam, and again, you'll see this is a dart, not a, a broad seam, which would look more like a trumpet rounded on the end. Oof. Terrible draw line. So nice working with pencils. Can always correct it. So I move the ruler or the yardstick. The cut threads that are still on the sailcloth can be removed completely if desired. There we go. We did not spend the extra time to do this as the small pieces of thread are seldom seen when the sail is in use. Now we're putting some seam stick down. Now it's helpful to make sure your threads are cleaned up fairly well. Um, and I just stuck it to the table. You can do that too. It's a, a neat way to easily get the seam stick started and then you can just bend it back on itself. And I'm putting another little row in here just because the seam is getting wider. Oops. Now we're going to take this. To create this dart, Jeff will line up that panel to the new pencil line smoothly down its length. Match the edge to our new line. Tightening the seams like this to prevent the excess flutter that's already being experienced in the sail is typically done at the center location of the leech. We'll do this to this one seam here, and then we'll do it to one more seam right next to it. We will not show that. Now let's take it to the sewing machine and sew it back together. We're using the Sailrite Ultrafeed LS1 sewing machine, a portable walking foot sewing machine that's excellent for sail repair like this. 
We're sewing a zigzag stitch that's approximately four millimeters in length. Maximum width for this sewing machine about five millimeters. We will sew all the portion that has been ripped up and into the portion that is sewn by approximately an inch and do some reversing there. Then we'll create a second row of stitches, securing the fabric that we can see through on the underside. So we're moving right along the uh, edge of the fabric that we can see through uh, on the top surface. Before installing tapes, hold the sail up and check its shape. We will hold the sail up in the last chapter of this video to show you the final shape after our modifications. We're using a pre-folded Dacron tape that's available from Sailrite. This is a three inch wide pre-folded Dacron tape. We're applying double-sided tape or basting tape to both long sides of the pre-folded tape. We've already cut it to the appropriate length. We need to create a half inch hem on one end. This is the end that'll be next to the ring. We'll take this half inch hem to the sewing machine and sew a zigzag stitch over it, securing it in place. Next, we'll baste one side of the tape to the sail. Here's Cindy. Uh, we're ready to apply this uh, three inch folded tape to the foot of the sail. And I've already got the adhesive on it, so I'm gonna peel that off and lay it in far enough from here that I can still stitch to the end of this so within an inch or so of that edge and press it down onto the adhesive one side at a time. We cut this tape to size but we cut it extra long so when we reach the clue corner we will cut the excess off. We don't have to worry about installing a half inch hem at the end here because we'll reinstall the corner ring. If yours has a ring, you'll need to create the half inch hem that's close to the ring. Now I'm going to go back and uh, adhere the other side that already has the adhesive on it also. So I have the tape all adhered on both sides and I'm going to do a, a large zigzag close to the outside edge of it. A large zigzag is a five millimeter wide zigzag that's about four millimeters in length. The foot tape is now installed. Now we'll concentrate on the tape on the leech, and here we're going to install a leech line as well. Here, the Zerite Edge Hot Knife is used to help seal the edge of the leech line. Okay, we're uh, getting ready to attach the leech line on the head, and I'm going to fold this back and then zigzag over it to secure it. And I've uh, sealed the end with the hot knife. And then after I do this, we'll cover it up with the uh, folded tape. The head assembly for this Genoa is rather thick. It's for the Islander 37 sailboat. So we will sew a zigzag stitch over this looped leech line. And instead of doing reversing, we will actually move the fabric over to the beginning point again and sew down again with another row of zigzag stitches. We'll do this a few times, probably three to four times, and then move on and install the tape. This helps us to avoid from having to sew in reverse in a thick assembly and also over a rope. Sewing machines always sew easier in a forward position rather than in a reverse position. We did not show it, but a double-sided tape has been installed on this 3-inch pre-folded Dacron tape on both long sides. Here again, we'll create a half-inch hem at the top, just as we did for the foot. I'm going to apply the Dacron tape, the folded Dacron tape, to this edge now, and I'm going to start close enough to the ring that I can still stitch, get up there with the machine, and the line is going to lay inside the tape. 
I'm going to go through and secure one side and then go back and secure the other side. Okay, now I'm ready to adhere the other side and I'm going to lay the line down here in the fold and just press it down like I did the other side. Uh, at the clue end, I want to make a uh, sort of a pocket for the leech line to come out. So I'm going to go back 20 inches and trim off my 3 inch tape. And on this end where I've just cut it, I'd like to make a small hem like I did on the other end. And this edge still needs to be finished, so I'm going to continue the uh, tape. I'm going to tuck it in here. And right here is what I mean by a pocket. This is where the line is going to come out. But the rest of the edge will still be protected with the tape. Now in this area, I'm going to put the D-ring back on. So I'm going to just trim this off. I don't need a folded edge here. So when I get down to this area where I've overlapped these two, I want the line to come out in between the two tapes. And when I get to the machine, I'm going to undo this and stitch a hem right here and then lay it all back down and stitch all the way across there. Would you rather have a notch or a fold? That's fine, yeah. That's okay? Yep. Okay. Same process again using a zigzag stitch approximately five millimeters in width and four millimeters in length. We'll start here at the head, do a little bit of reversing, and sew down the length of the tape. We'll skip ahead to where the leech line exits. She stopped short about 12 inches of where the leech line exits. Watch what she does next to sew off that hem. This is the area where I turned under the hem and I need to go back and uh, stitch it closed. So I'm just going to open it up and do the zigzag across there. She'll start sewing where she left off sewing, approximately an inch or two, over top of those stitches and rebaste everything. And then fold it back down. Make sure my line is still uh, coming out that little pocket. I don't know if you can hear it, but this clue assembly is pretty thick, and this sewing machine works great at sewing thick assemblies like this. The Sayrite Ultrafeed LSZ1 sewing machine, available from Sayrite. Leech line tensioning devices can be installed in a multiple of ways, either a cleat, or grommets, or Velcro. We're going to use grommets. Now I need to put uh, two grommets in here for the leech line, so I'm going to go up about two inches from my folded edge. Cindy's using a hole cutter in the premium cutting block on the underside. Use the number two grommet cutter. 
When installing number one spur grommets, we like to use a number two hole cutter. We also like to use a heavy mallet, like this Barry King mallet, available and from Sailrite. I need another one, about two inches up from there. This type of tensioning device for the leech line utilizes two grommets where you run the leech line through the grommets and tie off the line once it's tensioned to the desired amount that you want. We're using a number one spur grommet. This is a nickel plated brass grommet, a die set, and again, the Berry King mallet from Sailrite. Will not show installing the second one. Here they are installed. Instead of putting a traditional leech line uh, uh, cleat on this sail, we put two grommets a couple inches apart. And uh, the nice thing about the two grommets like that is, is that they, they rarely fail. The challenge with them is that they're really not as adjustable as the other types of cleats. So what you end up doing here, and Jeff's going to uh, tie this off for us, there's really no right way to do it, but you basically uh, set the sail on the boat, make sure that the leech isn't fluttering, and then you come down here and he's going to run the leech line through the two grommets, wrap it around it a few times, and then he's going to do a half hitch just to keep it from slipping. And pretty much that's the way you leave it. If the leech starts to flutter, you make an adjustment to it, and the idea is for the cruising sailor, it just works. So, so a couple wraps and then a couple half hitches, and she's not going anywhere. Okay, uh, we went a little bit out of order here because we didn't show you the step where Jeff put the dart in the leech edge of the sail, and then we held up the sail to make sure that the leech looked like it was supporting. Uh, but we're gonna show you here at the end that the leech is indeed fixed with the addition of the darts and also uh, the new edge tape that we put on this uh, uh, Genoa for the Islander 37. So. If you don't have three big guys and, uh, and the ability to hold your sail up in a space like we have here, um, you can do it just by trying to hold up the leech edge with two people across, sort of spreading your arms as far as you can and just pulling the edge up. Uh, but it's best if you can suspend the entire sail from three corners. If you have to tie a corner to a tree or two, there's nothing wrong with that. But uh, what we're gonna do now, guys, is we're gonna all apply pressure. And what we're comparing the leech to is what we had prior uh, to the recut. And you can see that the leech uh, is now looking much better and supporting much better. I would actually say, and we set this leech line tension a little earlier, that we need a little more tension on the leech line. And notice when I pull on that, there you go. So I, I'm gonna wanna tighten up our leech line just a little bit here. And you can see how that has further improved uh, the cut and shape of the trailing edge of the sail. Now, if we look at the foot of the sail, so Dennis, keep pulling on that, and Jeff and I are looking at the foot, we cut a significant amount of, of round out of the foot of the sail. You can still see that there's what I typically refer to as a foot flap and or a shelf in the foot of the sail, and it is not supporting so that it looks great, but when we put this sail on the boat, gravity is gonna force that shelf down and it's gonna look fine. Um, this sail is a very old sail. And let's go ahead and lay it flat for a second, Jeff. This sail is an older sail. And back in the day, it was very common to run vertical broad seams in the foot panels of the sail in order to create a cupping of the foot. And uh, uh, it's not done as much as it used to be done in the past. And it certainly isn't done that way for furling head sails which this sail was at some point converted to a furling head sail because any additional shape like that has a tendency to end up being wrinkles in the wrapping as the sail is furled around the, uh, uh, the furling unit. Uh, but we have cut enough of the curvature out of the foot that it's just not gonna cause any problems. It should set very nicely. You have anything you wanna add to that, Joe? At one point you can see where they, all the panels line up and they cut this seam in. And I don't know if that was when they converted to a furling to flatten it a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, so this sail's been modified a few times, but that's what sail right's all about. You can take an older sail like this and you can trim it and change it to be used for a different purpose and uh, 
uh, actually holding this one up, I think it turned out quite well. If you'd like to see the video showing how to reinstall the D-ring at the clue, click this link here. Now our Genoa is in perfect shape after the leech and the foot have been recut. Here's the materials list and tools that we use to do this sale repair. You can purchase them at Sailrite. Be sure to watch our video showing how to inspect your sails for next sailing season, where Jeff Frank, Sailrite sail designer, explains how to check and repair a set of sails for the Islander 37 sailboat. For more free videos like this, be sure to check out the Sailrite website or subscribe to the Sailrite YouTube channel. It's your loyal patronage to Sailrite that makes these free videos available. I'm Eric Grant, and from all of us here at Sailrite, thanks for watching.